Welcome to the Nordic booth. We're at Embedded World uh, 2020. My name's uh, Bjorn Kvole. I'm a product marketing engineer at uh, Nordic Semiconductor. If we move over here, you can see this is our new flagship NRF uh, 5340 SOC. It's running two Cortex uh, ARM M33 processors, one at 128. Uh, megahertz and one at 64 megahertz. Uh, so why the two different frequencies? Um, so one of them's mainly for higher performance and then the other one's mainly for uh, better efficiency. And also the, one of the processors we mainly use for the application and the other processor mainly for uh, networking too. And that's for current consumption. And here you can actually see, here you can see the 5340 uh, development kit. So, and this is the SOC right over here. And uh, uh, how do people develop different things with this? Is it a standard way of um, doing stuff with the, around the Nordic? We or have something specific that's special about this one? We, we, we are using NRF Connect SDK, which is based on uh, the Zephyr real-time operating system. So that's the main way of, uh, that's the main SDK we use for uh, programming. You're contributing a lot to Zephyr, right? Yep. There's, there's Intel number one and you're like right there number two. I don't that's know. That's what I saw on the pie chart. That could be, that could be. So we're, we're high up there for sure. You are excited about the Zephyr. Yeah. And it's working great with your solutions. We're very happy so far. Yeah. You're very big in the BLE, right? We when are. you look at uh, Bluetooth, yep. um, it's kind of like Nordic is the biggest one? Nordic is the biggest. We have 40 to 50 percent uh, market share consistently worldwide in the BLE market. Nice. And here's some examples of yep. different products that are using the solutions. That we have. So this is actually a, a thread smart uh, uh, clothes hanger. So I think this is actually done in a store. So you can actually, if you have a dress or some kind of clothes article on this uh, smart hanger, uh, there's a touch screen on here and then you can choose the size that you want to try and then someone will uh, come out and bring the size to wow. you. Cool. There's also something happening on Flexible? Yep, this is a flexible BLE IC using our, our product, using our SOC. But you, your your BLE is not flexible, right? Maybe. No, yeah, they put that's, it on. that's a good question. They yeah. put it on here somehow. Yeah. That's a very and good question. Sphero and the basketball. Yeah. There's like thousands of products. There are, for sure. So here the basketball is quite cool. I think you, you have a bunch of different statistics that you can use uh, to improve uh, your basketball performance. Stuff for dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, here we all have kinds of stuff. Tracker, Trackers. animal tracker from Telespoort for uh, sheep. That's in Norway, so that farmers don't lose uh, track of their sheep. So you use Bluetooth for sheep? No, this is then using uh, the NRF 9160. So this is LTM or narrowband IoT. So we have we have uh, expanded. Before we focused mainly on Bluetooth low energy, but now we're also expanding into long range uh, LTM one. And so, so this uh, kind of ha started last year to do yeah. these? Yeah. Before exactly. you were just doing this stuff? Before we were mainly doing this and then we expanded with the GPS, narrowband and Th LTM one. This means your smart devices have no limit in range anymore, right? With this kind uh, of technology still, you can go very far. You can go 15 kilometers roughly. Max, That's depending on where up. the base station is. But so, of course, you have multiple base stations around, and then you are in effect, you have a long range for sure. Uh, so maybe do you show some of the the li like list of some of the partners that are sure, doing sure. different boards? Let's go right over here. Yeah. What have you the hash up? Yeah. Okay, so here you can see some of our different uh, module makers. So you can see we have NRF 5340 on this one, NRF 52840 SOC in this one, 52833. So that means this one right up there, so small, it has dual Cortex M33. Yep, that's true. And this one has a single? Single uh, Cortex ARM M4F. M4F? With float input. Um, that means high performance? Yeah. So. And uh, for example, a company like Ublox is just using their chip all over the place and doing a whole bunch of stuff. Yep. Um, 
how does it work for them to do partnership with uh, with Nordic? What do you you provided a lot of support to them and back and forward and make things happen? Yeah, so I think that's that's the main way we start and then they, they can talk, module makers can talk to one of our sales managers and then they can yeah get the conversation started. Which one is most popular? Maybe you cannot say. I'd say, well, you can see the 52832. There's a, definitely multiple modules here. It's uh, has good performance and also a good price. This is a Cortex M... M4F too. M4F also. Mm -hmm. Lots of different... And uh, maybe also shipping in largest quantities of these? Of these or which one is your most popular part? That that's uh, that's a good question. It's uh, it's hard to say. I'd say the fifty two eight thirty two is most likely the most right. popular. Yeah. And um, here's some stuff with the. Yep. So this is actually NRF. exactly this is showcasing the NRF fifty three forty. So this is actually showing a uh, Doom demo. So we can see here. Here we can see this is a, a BBC micro bit running on the NRF 51 and we're using a wireless uh, protocol then and we're actually running the Doom demo on, so we're running the demo on the application processor on the SOC there and all of the data is stored on the QSPI down here in between the SOC and the buttons. And then we have a high speed SPI connection to this 320 by 240 uh, pixel uh, display, which is very similar to what a lot of uh, wearables are actually using. So this is a great uh, this is a great SOC for wearable applications. It's running Doom smoothly. Yeah, you can see. I mean, it's this is pretty smooth. I would say very low latency, very low lag. But does it run Crisis? Right now we're only running Doom. Doom <laughs> That's one of those things people Doom, are chatting about. Yeah. Okay. Doom has an open source uh, port, so I think that's the main reason why uh, why we're using Doom. Yeah. Nice. So this is uh, really um, showing off the performance. The M33 is kind of like a Cortex M3, M4 kind of uh, performance or? Higher performance. Than higher M4. than those. But lower than M7, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's going to uh, open up bunch of new opportunities for sure, for sure. especially complex uh, opportunities if you require a lot of cryptography etc a lot of processing power such as doom for example that's uh, perfect do you show on this graph something about uh, the yeah, new so things here you that are can there? Just see you can see the application processor network processor the main idea is that you can run your application on here and then you run the networking side of things on here so in in this demo here we are running Doom on the application processor, and then on the network processor, we're running the BLE communication. So, big launch, kind of like now. This is for the Embedded World launch. So, how soon is devices coming with these? How long does it take? Because you have the dev kits now. Dev kits are out now. Dev boards. Yeah. No. Uh, so, that takes six months or something like that? Or? It, it depends how, I guess, most customers take one to two years to develop. So. But I'm not, I, I can't really say too much about, uh, I think it's, yeah, I can't say too much about uh, production readiness, I'm not, yeah. And uh, uh, one of the big deals of the Cortex M33 is about the security, right? Yep. There's like new things in there yep. that are doing hardware security. Yep. So you have, uh, you have the ARM trust zone for once, which sets up secure and non-secure parts of flash, RAM and peripherals. And that then implements uh, root of trust. Uh, you also have a key management unit. Uh, you have a crypto cell for hardware acceleration, and also the SPU too. So there are, yeah, uh, it is big focus on security on this uh, SOC. Nice. So even though it's a little bit of a strange and better world, what's the reception so far about this one? I mean, you can see there are a lot of people here. Your booth uh, is always are, busy. It doesn't matter what's happening busy in the all world. the time. And we do notice there is a lot, a lot of people are interested in, especially in the uh, 5340 demo. What's some of the other demos you have around here? So here we have a thread house. You can take a quick look at that. I'll move over to the other side quickly. Yep. So this thread demo, here we can see 
I have a remote here, as you can see here. And here we have a set of commands. So I can turn on and off the TV over there. At the back there, you can see the TV turns on and off. Uh, we have a fan up there. Then you also have a light, which you can turn on and off. Uh, we have a door lock right here. So I can either lock the door, unlock the door, and then I can also open the door, close the door. And we also have an alarm. So if I turn on this alarm, let's see, one more try. Now the alarm's on, <coughs> and then it should make, uh, let's see quickly. So the alarm is armed. Now you can see it makes a noise. Uh, one other thing is here is we're running uh, co-app over UDTP. So we have a gateway. And this is then connecting to uh, the Things IO, uh, which is a website where you can see more info on uh, the status of the home itself. <laughs> So as you can see, we can see the alarm, alarm status, armed or not armed. Uh, you can also see door control, etc. We can also ring the doorbell, for example, and then you can actually see we get, yeah, we got a new event. Yeah, it is 2:53. So this is the event we just got right now. I can press it one more time just to. So you can see we got an event right now, doorbell rings. So yeah, and this is all running thread, uh, IP protocol, and it's a great demo to show the capabilities of uh, the thread protocol. The thread protocol is, uh, is, how is the adoption of that? How big is it? A lot of people are using thread? I think, yeah, I think quite a lot of people are using thread, yeah. Especially for smart home applications, it's, uh, it's quite good. It uses routing, so it is quite a quick uh, protocol when it comes to mesh, and uh, yeah. And uh, reliable. You don't want some... It's very reliable too, some... exactly. So you do have multiple paths to, to the end uh, target, so if, if one node were to fall out for a reason... Uh... And uh, here at the reception area, yep. uh, what are you greeting people with around here? So here you can see all of our different uh, products that we have. We have a Nordic Thingy 52, rapid prototyping platform with different sensors, etc. for BLE right over there. You have the BBC Microbit, which we had in the Doom demo that I showed previously. It's running in NRF 51. How's the Microbit going? Uh, like, lots of schools are using them? I think, yeah, a, lo a lot of schools. I, I don't have any numbers for you, but I know it is, uh, it is quite a, it's in a Norway? popular... Any? Yeah, we we have quite a. We just got a shipment of micro bits uh, a few weeks back. So uh, all the children in Norway, they're all using it, or just some? maybe not all, but some. definitely definitely. And some. the UK is probably a lot. Yep, UK a lot too. Right. Uh, moving on, we have the Power Profiler Kit. So this is a great tool for actually uh, measuring the current of uh, Bluetooth low energy applications, and to see to see whether you are able to get the current that you need to get the battery lifetime that you require. Uh, here you have the 52840 dongle, uh, which uses our 52840 SOC. It's a very low cost uh, dongle. It can be used for uh, sniffing applications, for example, if you want to take a sniffer trace uh, between two Bluetooth low energy connections. That's a great, great tool for that. This is probably our most, uh, most uh, popular development kit. This is the NRF52 development kit running with the 52832 SOC. Back here we have a 52833 development kit. Uh, it's running Bluetooth 5.1 uh, direction finding, so you are able to run direction finding AOA on that kit. Uh, and then he back here we have the 5340 development kit. No, sorry, the 52840 there. And then we have the NRF uh, 9160 development kit over there. Uh, so all of these development kits that we saw there were all Bluetooth, and then these two here, the NRF 9160 development kit and the Thingy 91 development or the Thingy 91 prototyping port, are running uh, LTM1 or narrowband IoT long-range communication. Uh, is, uh, uh, NB IoT is it catching up? Is it getting a lot of traction? How is the market? I, th I think it's getting quite a lot of traction. One of the 
I guess one of the key differentiators between narrowband and LTM1 is that uh, narrowband does have a bit more range. It has less, uh, less bandwidth, so it is able to get more range. Also better penetration through the ground. Uh, we have noticed some customers, I think they're, you know, they're maybe they have a few meters of concrete and they have a device underneath that concrete in a basement somewhere and they're still able to get a connection uh, to the base station. So that's what, that's, I'd say the main difference between narrowband, LTM1 is then a bit more for uh, if you want mobility, for example, roaming applications, etc., a bit more higher throughput uh, than uh, LTM1 is. Is uh, NB-IoT lower in the power consumption also? Is it cheaper to use in terms of uh, carrier deployments and stuff like that, or not, not quite easy to define? That, that's, that depends a lot on the application, I think. Uh, especially if, if you have uh, higher throughput, so if you have more data to send, LTM1 is probably the better bet because um, you are able to send the data quicker and then sleep for uh, longer amounts of time. And there is a little bit more over here. Uh, how would you say, you, you, you said 40 to 50% um, of a BLE market. Yeah. How did you do that? How, why are people, uh, so many people working with Nordic? That's uh, it's a company called DNB. It's a bank in Norway, and they have uh, the Bluetooth SIG. You have all of the every device that um, every device, every Bluetooth low energy device has a listing. So from that, you are able to sort of Check. estimate. But I mean, like, uh, how how did Nordic become so successful? How did Nordic? Okay, is um, it uh, some kind of? Uh, we You're just do. better and faster and uh, lower power and I better price or? Oh, yeah. We do have very low power consumption, that's a part of our DNA. And it's also a very usable solution. So we do have uh, 30 plus application engineers in our tech support group. Uh, so we do have a Nordic developer zone, which the main idea is to try to help developers, customers get to market quicker. So I think it's a combination of very great hardware, also very great software, so we give a lot of our software away for free. And you also have the support then from our Nordic Dev Zone. And that then enables customers to come to market quickly. Let's check this demo right here. Yeah. What's happening there? Okay, so this is the Zigbee demo. So here we have a Zigbee house. It's very similar to the thread demo over here. And here you can see you can turn on and off. Uh, the different lights. Uh, you also have a door lock. I think we can. Is this on? Yeah. Alexa, unlock the door. Zero, 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 zero. Unlocking. Nice. So you told uh, Alexa the password. Yep. That's cool. Exactly. So now you know the password too. Nice. So yeah, that's the main. That's Zigbee, it's very similar to Thread in many ways. Um, I'd say the main difference is it uses a different uh, routing technique than Thread, but it is, uh, Zigbee's been a, around for quite a while and as you can see there is uh, Alexa support, uh, you have an IKEA light bulb support, Zigbee, yeah, it's here to stay for sure. Nice, and there's a couple more here, it's very yeah, busy. It's, but uh, it's maybe we busy. can get to that one there. Let's get right here. This looks like um, the stuff happening with a small. Is it? Is it e-ink displays? Yeah. So this display here, you can actually see if you look on here. Uh, you can see this is Google Calendar, and we can basically give in uh, different event dates, and then from that. This, then, this information then gets sent down to the NRF 9160 here, so this uh, development kit here, and then it's sending BLE packets then to these different meeting rooms, and these meeting rooms are all using uh, e-paper displays. So you can see right now they're all vacant, but if I were to give in, if I were to give in a, uh, a new event at this time, you can then see that uh, 
the e-paper display would get updated with with the calendar event. All right. If we move on to the, this device, this is another demo that we're running on the NRF, the Thingy 91. So you can see we have an NRF 9160SIP. We're running uh, iBasis SIM cards, LTM1. And here you can actually see, if you zoom back out over here, you can see these are all of the devices that we actually have connected as of right now. So I think I can... So you can see here, this is actually uh, one of the devices we actually have on at the moment. And you can see this, we are indoors, so there's no GPS signal right now. Yeah. but we are able to get uh, an approximate position via the base station. So that's how we get the location uh, position. So it's uh, NBIOT. I think this, is, this one is running, we have some running on LTM1, and then we have others running on narrowband IoT. What's the billing? How does it work? The, how do people pay for the service? Like telecoms so have some kind of package? Yeah, so the telecoms have some kind of package and then depending on how much data you you need, uh, yeah, you pay varying on, on the data you need to use. You Very similar like a, to cell phones. You can say one gigabyte for one year and boom, that works. Yeah. For example, you also get you get uh, 10 megabytes free of charge when you, when you either buy a Thingy 91 or a 91 uh, development kit, you get a free iBasis SIM card and that gives you then 10 megabytes free of charge. How many countries have this stuff implemented already? Are there some that are not, that need to catch up, that are not quite advanced in this yet? There are a few that I guess need to catch up, but most of the major countries already have either LTM1, narrowband, or both supported. All right, so I think there's a bunch more, but it's busy, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's the yeah. yeah. Those are the main demos. I'd say. Cool. Yeah. So what's uh what's the next kind of event Nordic goes to? Next kind of right. We're at uh, Light and Building. I think that's in one or two weeks time. So we will. Is that a cancelled show? Oh no, sorry, that has been cancelled. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you were in Barcelona, right? That's, that's cancelled. Canceled. That's yeah. cancelled. Um, we'll see. Let's see a bunch of shows. You just go to all of them. We do have a Nordic Tech Tour that's starting in uh, March 9th, actually. So that is a that's basically where we present. Uh, we present for around six hours. We present our solutions and present uh, in, in great technical detail what what solutions we have to offer on the web. No, no. So this is actually in person. Where I will be at. Uh, I think it's. 20, 30 different locations in EMEA, so Europe, Middle East, uh, Africa. Um, so yeah, we'll be presenting the NRF 9160, some of our Bluetooth project pro products, and also the NRF Connect uh, SDK, which is our new SDK for the NRF 53 series and also the NRF 91 series. And um, I guess you're part of all these groups that design the future of uh, Bluetooth, the future of all these different things. Maybe yep. there's some stuff happening in the future, right? The, uh, maybe there's new plans, Bluetooth 6 or I don't know, something. You're probably involved. A bunch of stuff for the future too. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not involved with that, so I can't really tell you <laughs> At the company, too much. Right? But, but uh, we do have Bluetooth 5.2 just came out a while back. Uh, Bluetooth low energy audio, so I'd say that's the next uh, big thing uh, to come out regarding Bluetooth. And of course you have, uh, you also have Bluetooth 5.1 direction finding, that's quite big. If you want to talk to the Cupa guys afterwards, they're right here. They have a great uh, cool direction finding demo. All right, my name is Santo Pugliat, I'm, I'm from Cupa. We are here at Nordic booth and we are here demonstrating Cupa's um, indoor positioning technology. Uh, this, these tags which we are tracking with our locators up there, these are based on Nordic, Nordic radios and uh, we, are, we are using direction finding to locate these tags on, on the on the tank. So what's inside here and there and up there? Yeah, basically these are all 
all simple BLE DAGs, but they operate on the, they run Coupa firmware and uh, we operate slightly different than normal DAGs. We are sort of on the edge channels of the BLE spectrum. So <laughs> it means that it's more sort of uh, free from other radio traffic that headsets and, and phones are using and therefore the, the accuracy is getting better uh, when, we, when we track the items. Here on the, on the demo I have just a couple of these tags, let me take all of them and start working around. You can see that they're changing the location. Going here, coming back and putting them back here. So this is better than other BLE tracking? Let's put it so that it's uh, it's less error prone. Uh, we can do up to uh, 30 centimeters accuracy in the in the good environment, and even in complicated environments, we can go sub one meter accuracy with with tracking. Coupa uh, has been in this business for uh, since 2012, and and the technology itself goes back to the Nokia times, where the research research group of smart research people spun off the technology and started off the clock. Is this in a lot of devices out there or is it not yet? Is it like a future thing? Uh, no, no, there have already been a lot of uh, commercial deployments and uh, the, we sell through the so solution providers and system integrators globally. And uh, yeah, there are use cases really vary from the... Uh, What's in there? Yeah, these are the tag, tag provider. Uh, sorry, these are the the tags from our partner companies. They are all based on NR52 radio, and that's uh, they all are running Coupas Coupas proprietary firmware. They all all use cases come with little bit different requirements on tag shapes, shapes and sizes, and therefore we are not the only one doing the tags. We rather do the firmware licenses out to. TAC partners who are then designing the TAC that the use case needs. So the firmware is your secret sauce? Uh, I, I would say that the firmware is one piece of the secret sauce. The secret sauce is more how do we uh, how do we build the locator with multiple antennas and, and how the uh, digital, let's say the, the analog signal is converted into the digital signal and then finally the algorithm that puts the blue dot in the end on the map. That's the secret sauce for us. Uh, are you also uh, working with the Nordic team in, in Finland? Yeah, we have been working with Nordic for almost, I, I would say, almost since the beginning. Um, the uh, Currently the development is, is mostly on, on the tax side, of course, but um, it, it's good to have good friends in this in this business so that we have a good tool to work with. Are there a lot of tags out there in the world? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I cannot give you the definite numbers, but I can say you that BLE seems to be taking off as a platform as technology and, and uh, especially any kind of asset tracking use case that may not have been possible in the past is possible now because the accuracy, power efficiency and the cost of the of the tax and and the cost, total cost of ownership of the solution system itself. How long is the battery on one of these? Oh, the battery life again depends on the use case because we usually the way it works is that if tag is not moving, we rather put it sort of on the kind of hibernated to sleep mode. So to conserve the battery and making the radio interface less, that the, create less noise in the radio interface. So that's uh, that's quite important. When the more tags you have in the deployment, the the you want to control how they are sort of chirping the signal. So it's like one month battery life on this one? No, what? no, no. We are talking about years. Years. Yeah, we're talking and about. And with this accuracy and this speed. Like what you're just doing right now, where you're moving around? Sorry? Like this tag is gonna be running for years. Yeah, it depends. If, if I'm moving it all the time and if I'm not sort of letting it sleep for a while, it will it will run out faster. But if, if I sort of leave it there, if it's a attached to item that is not moving regularly, it can run for years. So, um, does it mean it has an accelerometer and it's exactly. gonna turn off the battery it's and power consumption? That's exactly right. We can also Coupa is also able to use like a, some kind of smart zones that when asset is for example or tag is going out from the out from the zone we are able to 
uh, the system is able to tell the tag to do something else. For example, change the battery life when it's in the warehouse area or uh, even, I don't know, the, the vibrate or put the lights on if it's outside the perimeter. All right, so a lot of future for Bluetooth tracking for sure, even though kind of like uh, there's a range issue sometimes, right? You could say so, but I, I, I think so far it, it hasn't been, that the range itself hasn't been really the, the limitation for us. Um, What's think, the limitation? I think we have yet to see that, that, that a lot of use cases for the future will bring. What's the price of one of those tags? Oh, we, we are talking about anything between the five, five euros up to eight euros or even, even more. But that all depends on the sensors that you have on board, the battery, the casing, the certification. Okay, cool.